Joined once again by Reese Davis to talk about the college football rankings. They were unveiled live in between the games there in Indianapolis. And Reese, once again, I find myself using a word that's unusual for this sport, and that's clarity. I think we all had a pretty, a pretty good sense of who one through four would be, and that is where things land. Is there anything of note about what follows in five and six in terms of what will play out over the course of the next few weeks as it relates to Georgia and Oklahoma? Uh, you know, I think, Scott, the biggest thing for me is I still believe Georgia's fine. I believe Georgia controls this death. And Oklahoma needs a little bit of help, but you know, the first thing they need to do is, is take care of their own business and make sure that defense doesn't get them clipped somewhere along the way. But, yeah, I agree with you. I think there's real clarity. Certainly, I think that the top five do. And uh, the one thing that, that struck me tonight, and, and I understand why, because they, they're not playing to their capabilities, Ohio State at 10. I've been saying from the beginning that I thought that if they just went out, they would get in. Um, I still think they probably would, but I'm not sure it's as clear as, uh, as I thought. I'm with you because given the vulnerabilities they've shown, given the fact they got thumped by Purdue, if they beat Michigan, I think they're going to have themselves in a conversation with, say, an Oklahoma or possibly a West mm -hmm. Virginia, somebody from the Big 12 going head-to-head. -head, and, and that just like that Iowa loss last year, that Purdue loss is going to be glaring, isn't it? I agree. I think the way they looked that night and the way they've looked so many times, look, they deserve credit for winning the games. But when you have the talent that they have, you expect more. And I think the committee is clearly stating that they expect more of Ohio State. And they're now, uh, if memory serves, top of my head, I think they're the lowest ranked one loss power five team. You all broached the, the, the subject that is going to be a talking point, I think, from now until we know who the final four are for the college football playoff, and that's Alabama. Can they survive a loss in Atlanta? Um, I think it depends on the other things. If Clemson wins out, if Notre Dame wins out, if Michigan wins out, and then Georgia has beaten them in the championship game, right. I don't think they'll go. Mm -hmm. If someone else loses mm -hmm. in that group, then Alabama would probably have a pretty good case. But if it's the scenario I just laid out, I don't think they would go. I don't think they could survive the one loss. How do you make a case for them? I don't think that you could because you, you, you'd obviously you'd include Georgia because they would have won. Notre Dame would be unbeaten. Michigan, the others would be conference champions. And and, and it would be different because everyone says, oh, Alabama lost last year. Yeah, but they didn't lose in championship weekend. They lost against Auburn. Everybody knew they were banged up. And sometimes you benefit, Reese, don't you, by not playing. You benefit by being the team that doesn't take that L so late. Every year presents its own, as you well know, unique set of circumstances. The one thing that, I, that could help them in the room is clearly the committee thinks they're the best team by a pretty significant margin. I always describe it, Scott, as a mosaic. You know, there's, there's this piece and that piece. And, and what... What piece is so glaring that you can't live with anymore? And I think that's where uh, that's where Alabama might be vulnerable under the scenario that we've laid out. Now, I like that mosaic term because much like a piece of art, two people can look at the exact same thing and see two entirely different <laughs> things. And so we've got some time to sort that's things true. out, Reese, and we look forward to the conversation that surrounds it. Thanks so much for your time, and uh, we will talk next week. You bet, Scott.